The following material is based on a presentation given at the Music Education Week in Washington in June 2009 by Dr. Mead Killian, founder and president of Etymotic Research. Dr. Killian's mission to protect hearing is driven by the fact that he himself is an accomplished musician and understands how devastating hearing loss can be to one's career. The good news is that there has been increasing interest in hearing protection from musicians over the past several years, but the message has not yet reached the critical mass needed to enact change. Fortunately, hearing protection is more widely available than ever before. Options range from simple foam earplugs to the new generation of affordable high-fidelity earplugs that allow musicians to hear the full range of music unaltered using special filters that reduce the overall volume to a lower, safer level. An analogy to risk of hearing damage from overexposure to loud sounds is the risk of skin cancer from overexposure to the sun. In 1979, FDA recognized the dangers of overexposure to the sun and developed SPF ratings. Millions of people now use sunblock. Others choose to ignore the warnings, but most are aware of the risks. To be clear, our message is a positive one. The hearing loss that many of us assumed was an inevitable part of growing old is, in fact, preventable. Research shows that much of the hearing loss we experience as seniors is cumulative, the result of the barrage of noise traumas to our ears we suffer in our younger years. Now, let's take a close look inside the ear and show you why a musician's career can be affected by noise-induced hearing loss. What happens when the ear is exposed to excessive noise? The cochlea itself has fluid-filled spaces. The most important space contains the organ of corti, where hearing occurs. Motion of the fluid inside the cochlea causes the receptor cells to fire and send impulses along the auditory nerve to the brainstem and then to the brain. When sound pressure is too high, these tiny sensitive hair cells become limp, like spaghetti, as shown here. Most of these hair cells may recover, but with excessive exposure some of them will die, resulting in hearing loss. There are about 15,000 of these hair cells in the ear. When these hair cells are destroyed, they don't grow back. In a worst-case scenario, let's imagine you lose two hair cells a day from hammering, factory work, a loud concert, or playing drums. You would lose about 700 hair cells per year. After about 20 years, it is quite possible you could have little hearing left at all. The key to avoid such a devastating hearing loss is to adopt hearing protection early. Interviews with drumline students from Hoffman Estates High School in Illinois revealed that they were not fully aware of the risks of hearing loss or the benefits of hearing protection. The first time we played the cadence, then, you know, it was loud, I was used to it, and as soon as we ended, my ears were ringing, like they always do. But then the second time we played it, as soon as I put them in, got used to them, they were pretty comfortable, and then it was kind of like I turned the volume down on my iPod. I could still hear it and, you know, distinguish everything in it, but it was just quieter, and then we played through it. As soon as we ended and I took the plugs out, my ears weren't ringing like they were the first time. After we had we had used the uh, the ear protection, it was a lot easier to hear um, the other things that were going on around you, and uh, the other instruments were a lot more uh, pronounced uh, than generally when we don't have hearing protection. And I think the the biggest reason was just because you could hear, especially the keyboards. There, it's easy to lose the keyboards w within the snare line. Um, having the snare right there, uh, it's a lot easier to hear the keyboard and the other the bass drum and stuff than it generally would be, and it keeps it a lot tighter. I've been drumming for six or seven years now and uh, drum set and stuff and I do have earplugs but I rarely use them um, which probably isn't smart and but I just it's uh, you know I've thought of it as a hassle or it's uncool to wear the earplugs and stuff and going to concerts and stuff but after using them and seeing the change in the and the effect that it has on the ear um, you know I think in the future, it would be smart to use the earplugs and that it really does make a difference. The high fidelity earplugs worn by these students preserve the most important range of frequencies for music and speech, yet reduce volume evenly, much like turning down the volume on an iPod. Using these earplugs during loud activities prevents ears from overloading, allowing musicians to hear the full range of music around them.
How loud is too loud? It is generally assumed that noise below 80 decibels is safe. Above that, the safe levels of exposure depend on how long you are exposed to noise and how loud it is. For every 3 dB increase in sound above 85 dB, you need to cut the time your ears are exposed by half. The high school drum line in the video peaked at 115 dB, which is only safe for about two minutes if ears are unprotected. Does safe for two minutes mean you're going to lose your hearing after that? No. Your ears will ring, sounds will be muffled, and for most people, their hearing will recover. But repeated exposures at that level will begin to take a toll. All musicians, classical, jazz, and rock run a higher than average risk of excessive exposure than does the average music listener. The earplugs used by the students in the video reduce noise by 20 dB. So, if we reverse the formula we used before, and for each 3 dB you decrease sound, you could double the time you're exposed to excessive noise. A 20 dB reduction means that you can play safely 100 times as long in the same environment. That means 25 safe hours at 100 dB instead of 15 minutes. Of course, the classroom is not the only place where earplugs can protect your hearing. Let's close with a quiz. Do real musicians use hi-fi earplugs? The answer to that is yes. Many of the world's top classical, jazz, and rock musicians wear high-fidelity earplugs and in-ear monitors. Entire military bands wear them. Can you play well with something in your ears? Yes. In fact, you often play better because your ears do not overload and you can hear how you blend with the rest of the musicians. One caveat. Anytime you change the sound coming to your brain, even with a good high-fidelity earplug, there is an adjustment period. And depending on your instrument, there may be a change in the amount of vibration in your ear canal. Finally, will people I know wear earplugs? Yes, if you pass on the word. Widespread acceptance starts with you.